Saudi Arabia witnessed a spell of strong winds and severe lightning storms on Tuesday, causing widespread damage across the West Asian nation. Flash floods have hit parts of Saudi Arabia as heavy rainfall has been recorded across the kingdom since last week. And something surprising is happening in Mecca, leading many to wonder, could this be a sign from Jesus? The Holy Kaaba in Mecca is facing a crisis that is shocking the world. Strange, supernatural phenomena continually occur in this holy land, causing many people, while praying, to be trampled while trying to escape the chaos. Could this be a sign from God? If so, would it be a good or bad omen? Or perhaps an imminent warning about the end times? Or a punishment? The Kaaba, which is located in the center of the Al-Haram Holy Mosque in Saudi Arabia, plays a fundamental role in the Hajj, the pilgrimage that Muslims make to Mecca. However, recently terrible tragedies have occurred in the Kaaba. Great storms engulfed the entire area, followed by constant invasions of insects attacking this sacred region. Millions of people are still struggling with the consequences of this destruction. A huge swarm of locusts invaded Mecca in Saudi Arabia earlier this week, prompting authorities at Islam's holiest site to begin a cleanup operation to remove them. Several abnormal phenomena have occurred around and around the holy city of Mecca, raising doubts among religious believers that the prophecies are being fulfilled. Hail and locusts are two of the ten plagues mentioned in Exodus, used to punish Pharaoh for his actions that included the enslavement of the Jews. Even after witnessing God's power and strength, Pharaoh decided to disobey and faced divine wrath. Earthquakes and floods are considered signs of our Lord's second coming, when God will return to judge humanity for its sins and take the righteous to heaven for eternal life. This further reinforces the belief that Jesus may return in the near future. Why are these signs appearing in the Kaaba and not elsewhere in the world? The Kaaba was already a sanctuary in pre-Islamic times. Muslims believe that Abraham and his son Ishmael were the builders of the Kaaba. Tradition says that the original structure was simple and roofless. The Quraysh tribe, which ruled Mecca, rebuilt the pre-Islamic Kaaba in about 68 CE, using alternating courses of masonry and wood. A door was raised above ground level to protect the sanctuary from intruders and floods. Muhammad was expelled from Mecca in 620 CE and went to Yatrib, now known as Medina. After his return to Mecca in 629 to 630 CE, the sanctuary became the focal point for Muslim worship and pilgrimage. The pre-Islamic Kaaba housed the black stone and statues of pagan gods. Muhammad is said to have cleansed the Kaaba of idols after his victorious return to Mecca, restoring the sanctuary to the monotheism of Abraham. The black stone is believed to be the only remaining relic of the original structure, given to Abraham by the angel Gabriel and venerated by Muslims. Muhammad made his last pilgrimage in 632 CE, the year of his death, and thus established the rituals of pilgrimage to God's house on earth, so that you can understand more clearly and quickly the signs that surround us in challenging times like the ones we are living in it is essential to be aware of the prophecies that are being fulfilled. Many still don't realize the magnitude of what is happening around us, and that's why I decided to offer something special to all channel subscribers, an exclusive digital ebook titled The Secret Behind the Holy Bible. This book is an unmissable opportunity to access impactful revelations about biblical prophecies that will open your eyes to current reality. Don't let this unique chance pass you by. The knowledge contained in this ebook could change the way you see events around you. The process to get your gift is quick and simple. Just click on the link available in the first pinned comment to download it immediately. But be careful, we only have a few units available and they are running out quickly. Don't delay your decision. Guarantee your copy now before the ebook is taken down. Take advantage of this exclusive opportunity and be prepared for what's to come. The word Kaaba means cube in Arabic, and this 14-meter-high building is considered by Muslims to be the abode of God on earth. The Kaaba is clearly mentioned twice in the Quran, in verses 95 and 97 of Surah 5, where God established the Kaaba as a holy house built for humanity. 
Verse 96 also mentions its location in the center of Mecca. In Muslim tradition, the Kaaba is seen as connected to the heavenly Kaaba, and its founding is attributed to the prophet Abraham. Historian Jacqueline Chabi, an expert on the origins of Islam and author of The Decree of Luran, Biblical Figures in Arabic, noted that several biblical themes such as the idea of a final judgment and a benevolent God who created the world, as well as narratives related to figures from the Torah and the Old Testament, influenced early Islamic discourse after the revelation in the Hira. In response to the hostility of local Jewish tribes, the Quran describes Abraham, accompanied by his son Ishmael, as the founder of the Kaaba, which gives him enormous importance for Muslims. Although the Holy Kaaba, also known simply as the Kaaba, is not literally the house of Allah, it symbolizes Allah's abode in this world. It is important to remember that Muslims do not worship the Kaaba, but rather that it is the symbol of Allah's supremacy and uniqueness, representing the first pillar of Islam. The fundamental belief of every Muslim is that there is no God other than Allah. Furthermore, the importance of the Kaaba is evidenced by the fact that it is known as the Qibla. In simple terms, it is the direction towards which Muslims around the world turn when performing their daily prayers. Hajj, the fifth pillar of Islam, is an obligation for every Muslim who is financially and physically able to perform it at least once in their life. Upon arriving in Mecca, Muslim pilgrims gather in the courtyard of the Grand Mosque, commonly known as Masjid al-Haram, around the Holy Kaaba. Muslims are then instructed to perform tawaf, which is circumambulation around the Holy Kaaba seven times. They also seek to touch or kiss the black stone, located in the eastern corner of the Kaaba. This act symbolizes the Holy Kaaba as a symbol of unity and equality among Muslims in the world. This is also stated in the Holy Quran, O mankind, we have truly created you from a single pair, a male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Truly, the most honorable among you in the eyes of Almighty God is the most just. The sacred Kaaba is in fact one of the oldest religious sites on earth. Even before the arrival of Islam, the Kaaba was one of the holiest places of worship for the Arabs. According to Islamic history, Prophet Abraham, together with his son Prophet Ishmael, built the Holy Kaaba under the command of Allah, as stated in the Holy Quran. And when Abraham and Ishmael were raising the foundations of the house, they said, Our Lord, accept from us. Truly, you are the hearer, the knower. Based on Islamic tradition, the sacred Kaaba was initially a simple structure. Although Prophet Abraham built the Kaaba for the worship of Allah, the Quraysh occupied the Kaaba with idols for worship during their rule. However, in 608 CE, powerful leaders of the Quraysh tribe worked together to rebuild the pre-Islamic Kaaba, using different types of wood and masonry. Furthermore, as the Kaaba was located on floodplains, its door was raised above ground level to protect the holy place from floodwaters and intruders. The Return of Muhammad and the Purification of the Kaaba Shortly after being blessed with prophecy, the Prophet Muhammad and his companions and followers were expelled from Mecca to Medina in 620 CE. After the conquest of Mecca in 630 CE, the Prophet Muhammad destroyed all the idols in the Kaaba, returning it to the monotheism preached by the Prophet Abraham. In doing so, the Prophet Muhammad was said to have recited the following verse from the Holy Quran. Truth has come, and falsehood has disappeared. 1781. Since then, the Kaaba has been modified and altered extensively over the years, although its basic structure has remained intact, with changes made to accommodate the growing number of pilgrims. The foundation of the Holy Kaaba remains the same. With a history so rich in spiritual elements, the Kaaba could be the first place where a sign from God will be sent, drawing the attention of all humanity. Why must the Lord return? The New Testament contains many references to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9.28 clearly states, So Christ, having once been offered to take away the sins of many, 
will appear a second time without sin to bring salvation to those eagerly awaiting him. Throughout the New Testament, we find a reference to the return of Jesus Christ on average once every 25 verses, and 23 of the 27 books mention the second coming. It is the focal point of Scripture and the basis of the gospel itself, the good news of the kingdom of God that he will establish at his return. The scriptures are clear in stating that the return of Jesus Christ will be visible and seen by the whole world. Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye will see him. Revelation 1, 7. The angels told the apostles that Jesus will return in the same way he ascended to heaven. His return will be visible and not hidden. The angels said to the men of Galilee, Why do you look up to heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken from you to heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go to heaven. Acts chapter 1, 11. Jesus' departure was clear and visible, and the angels assured him that his return would be as well. The idea of a secret rapture, often taught, is not true. Christ promised that he would return, and he himself described how this would happen. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am you may be also. John 14, 3. He further detailed this prophecy when he said, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew 24, 30. We know that before Christ returns, the world will be filled with violence, evil, and corruption. What we don't know is exactly when he will return, but what will the world be like after your return? The Bible speaks of a perfect one-world government, as described in Revelation 11, 15-19. Considering the corruption we see today in all countries, even in the most developed nations, such as the United States, we can observe that world politics is built on a flawed foundation, symbolized by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Around the world, corrupt governments have caused great misery and untold deaths. We can see this in the many countries involved in wars, fighting for power and control of their governments. She refers to times and seasons, Acts 1 or 7, when talking about Jesus' return. Furthermore, Jesus gave us signs to look for that indicate his return is near. Matthew 24 contains one of the most detailed discourses on this topic, where Jesus answers the disciples' question about what will be the signs of his coming and the end of the age. Matthew 24, 3. The Signs of Jesus' Return Among the signs mentioned by Jesus are false messiahs, wars, and rumors of wars. He also said that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. In the original Greek, the word for nation is ethnos, from which we derive the word ethnicity. Today, in our society, we see the proliferation of conflicts between different ethnic groups. Furthermore, Jesus mentions famines and earthquakes in several places. There will be a period of persecution and the emergence of false prophets who will bring great deception. As a result, many will go astray, and the love of many will grow cold. In this environment, the gospel message will be preached throughout the world, and then the end will come. The challenge in understanding these signs is correctly interpreting their nature and meaning. There are several moments in the history of humanity in which we could associate the signs indicated in the scriptures, including the period in which we currently live. This further highlights the challenge that biblical scholars face when trying to identify our position in the prophetic calendar. Furthermore, although Jesus described what will happen before his coming, he never specified how long these things would last. When we consider all this, what we are left with is the certainty that Jesus will return soon, even if we don't know exactly how long soon represents. How then do we prepare for the Lord's return? Salvation is a free gift from God, based on His grace, Ephesians 2, 8-9, but it is offered only to those who ask for it. If you have never asked Jesus for your salvation and forgiveness of your sins, do so now. It's simple. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. 
Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, inviting him into your life. Romans 10, 9-10 When you receive Christ, you also receive his Spirit. Many people pray the prayer of salvation, but their lives do not change. The Scriptures teach us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul wrote that we must be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18. Whenever this instruction appears in the Scriptures, it is understood that the filling of the Holy Spirit must occur continually. To clarify, this does not mean that you receive more from the Holy Spirit, but that the Spirit receives more from you. In other words, you cede more and more control to the indwelling Spirit of Christ. A good habit to develop is to pray every morning to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and you can repeat this prayer throughout the day as circumstances require. We were not meant to walk our Christian journey alone. When you become a believer, you are invited to be part of God's family. God's desire is for you to be an active participant in the body of Christ. This may include being part of a local church, joining a small group, and being with other believers. The writer of Hebrews instructs us to encourage one another daily until the Lord returns. Hebrews 3.13 Part of preparing for the end times involves staying firmly connected to the community. We are to love and encourage one another daily, and as we do so, the body of Christ is strengthened. All of these practices are important and have been affirmed by Christians throughout the ages. Despite differences about the end times, these beliefs are even reflected in the Apostles' Creed, which states that Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and will return from there to judge the living and the dead. He will return to judge the living and the dead, bringing with Him the promise of eternal life. Jesus will return, and we who worship the Lord do not say this reluctantly, as if it were a distant event, but with joy. Jesus Christ will indeed return, and we fervently say, Nevertheless, come, Lord Jesus. But what does God tell us about the Antichrist? He warns us to be careful when seeking a place to pray in humility, for there is the danger of encountering not the true God, but a false God, the Antichrist. This false God is a figure who will emerge during the Age of Justice, before the end of the world bringing corruption and oppression for a period of 40 days or 40 years. His arrival will be one of the great signs of the Day of Judgment. He will deceive many people with miracles and teachings. Initially, he will claim to be Jesus, but later he will proclaim himself as God. He will travel the world asking people to follow him, offering riches, food, and promising to end their suffering. He will be able to perform miracles as God's test of humanity, resurrect the dead, cut people in half, and walk between the divided parts before ordering them to reconnect. Before continuing the video, an important message. Don't forget to secure your copy of our exclusive book. It is available in the first pinned comment of this video. Take advantage of this unique opportunity. He will have the power to bring forth the riches of the earth, offering abundance of food and sustenance to tempt people to follow him. However, a clear sign that he is not really God is that, despite all these miracles, he will not be able to cure his own physical deformities. He will send his army to fight anyone who refuses to believe in him. False gods are those who claim who speak in the name of God, but who actually have their own agendas. Jesus warned his disciples to be aware of these people. He not only warned his followers about the dangers of false gods, but also gave instructions on how to recognize them. When Jesus met people who were lost or misguided, he always showed compassion, responding with patience and kindness. However, when faced with religious hypocrites and false teachers, he responded with righteous anger and courageous conviction. God gives us the sign of the Antichrist because he wants us to always be attentive. He does not want us to be deceived by false signs and false temples. However, most importantly, God does not want us to be constantly obsessed with looking for the Antichrist, as this can leave us exhausted and distraught. Instead, He guides us to focus on God, to let His light guide our path. Because there is something that still prevents the manifestation of the Antichrist. When the restraining power that currently hinders the Antichrist is removed from the earth, he will assume world control. 
However, God will defeat him and bring judgment on those who did not believe in Jesus. According to Jesus' words, there will be a great dawn when the Son of Man returns, an event that everyone will witness, including those who pierced him. All people on earth will see it, and the tares will be gathered first and burned, symbolizing judgment or punishment for those who rejected Jesus' atoning sacrifice. Therefore, continue to trust in what God has provided and know that He will prepare everything for you before your return. Your task is to stay alert and discern the signs God is sending. At the same time, we must pray fervently to be attentive and with our hearts prepared to welcome Him back. Matthew 24, 7-8 mentions that there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, and that all of this is just the beginning of the pains. Other Bible translations describe these pains as labor pains, which increase in frequency and intensity. The persecution of Christians, mentioned in Matthew 24, 9, will be intense. They will hand you over to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all the nations because of my name. In the last days, persecution will intensify precisely because of the name of Jesus. They won't mind if you pray, as long as you don't mention that name. It is possible to be in favor of religion, as long as the name of Jesus is omitted. But this is not true apostasy. Matthew 24.10 talks about how many will be offended, betray one another, and hate one another. When persecution increases, people will leave Bible preaching, Christ-honoring churches, the Apostle John commented on those who abandoned the true faith, stating, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it might be revealed that none of them were of us. 1 John 2.19 Many churches are designed to be attractive, but they do not preach blood redemption, the lordship of Christ, repentance, or eternal hell nor do they teach following Jesus until death. When persecution begins, these churches will empty, as they are made up of people who have never truly known Christ. Matthew 24.11 also warns that many false prophets will arise and deceive many. Although false Christs are religious figures, false prophets do not necessarily have to be religious. A false prophet is anyone who speaks with authority, stating what is right or wrong. The world is full of these individuals. The characteristic of a false prophet is self-interest. A true prophet speaks in the name of Almighty God, not for his own benefit. Finally, Matthew 24.12 warns us that wickedness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. Crime is increasing, and for more information, just read the news. As wickedness and sin spread, love between people will grow cold, and we will find ourselves in a situation where we cannot trust strangers. Due to increased lawlessness, false prophets claim that there is no absolute standard of right and wrong. Without a firm moral standard, morality deteriorates and humanity descends into immoral and debauched behavior. According to Matthew 24.14, the gospel will be preached throughout the world as a testimony to all nations before the end comes. At the end of time, there will be people who love Jesus intensely and firmly defend the truth, proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. Christians are not saved by their perseverance, but they persevere because they are saved. These are signs that have always occurred, but we are at the climax of these events. The Bible does not claim that everyone will be saved, but that the gospel will be preached globally before the end. The apocalypse can be seen as the end described in the Bible representing the Lord's return to save His people and punish the unjust. We ask that you help us remember that the gift of Christ, Emmanuel, is our greatest treasure, filling us with His joy and peace. We thank you for your constant presence, which reminds us that no matter the situation, you are always with us and will never abandon us. We thank you for your strong daily presence in our lives, ensuring that we can be assured that your heart is with us, your eyes watch us, and your ears are always attentive to our prayers. We thank you for being protected by your favor, which makes us feel safe under your protection. Without you, we would certainly fail, but with your presence by our side, we have great hope. We thank you for giving us the motivation to get to where we are today, 
and we ask that your name always be in the blessings of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget to download our book, The Secret Behind Biblical Prophecies. There are already more than 500,000 copies sold, and we are at the last units, so don't waste time and enjoy. I guarantee that you will acquire a lot of knowledge after reading this sensational book, written with great care and love for all the subscribers of our channel, completely based on the Holy Bible. The link is in the first pinned comment. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch our video. We hope the content was not only informative, but also inspiring, leading you to reflect on the events and messages we shared. If you found the video interesting and would like to continue following our updates, we invite you to click the subscribe button just below this video. By subscribing to our channel, you become part of a community dedicated to exploring topics of great relevance and spiritual importance. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. This small gesture ensures that you are always the first to know when we publish new videos, bringing you more content that can enrich your journey of faith, knowledge, and understanding of the signs of the times. Each video is prepared with the utmost care and dedication, aiming to bring a clear and well-founded perspective on issues that directly impact our spiritual life. Your opinion is extremely valuable to us. Therefore, we ask that you leave your comments and suggestions in the comments section below. We want to hear your impressions, questions, and any feedback that can help us improve and better meet your expectations. Each comment is read carefully, and your ideas can directly influence the topics we cover in future videos. Share this video with your friends, family, and acquaintances. Spreading the message is a powerful way to touch more hearts and minds, helping others prepare and connect with such important topics. We believe that together, we can create an environment of reflection and mutual support where everyone feels encouraged to seek the truth and live a life full of faith and hope. We greatly appreciate your continued support. Your presence here is what motivates us to continue creating quality content. We hope to see you again in our next videos, where we will continue to explore deep and meaningful themes, always guided by truth and the desire to illuminate the paths we all walk. Until then, we hope you have a blessed and peaceful day. May every moment be an opportunity to grow in faith and wisdom. See you soon, and may God's grace always be with you and your loved ones.